Welcome to part 10 of my DIY backyard project. If you have missed the previous progress, check them out in the description. If you are planning to build a deck by yourself, I hope you will find this helpful. And my goal is to inspire more people into DIY. This time, we are getting into an interesting topic, joist tape. I bought this joist guard or joist tape product, but I did not install them under the DAC boards because I have some concerns after doing some research. Well, I did use them somewhere else, I will show you in the future videos. Now, how many of you have the habit of reading all the instructions and the warning labels before starting a DIY project? If you read the label carefully, it says it is good with treated lumber and composite materials. Reading further down, you will see it is not recommended for flexible polyvinyl chloride, in the other words, PVC. In my case, all my DAC boards are ASAC PVC. You have to understand how this tape works. You may argue that the bitumen membranes is not directly getting contact with the PVC deck boards because there is a polyethylene flashing material on top of that rubberized asphalt adhesive. For me, the ASAC deck boards are too expensive to take the risk. It's all about chemistry. I found a very good article on LinkedIn I will post the link in the description. You have to understand what is PVC first of all. In summary, PVC is fiberglass reinforced with liquid plasterizers. The problem with bitumen or rubberized asphalt material will break down the plasterizers and make the PVC brittle. In long term, your ASAC deck boards may crack and cannot withstand the physical and environment abuse. I actually contacted the manufacturer ASAC about this, this is their email reply. They said they have no recommendation if you can or cannot use joist tape. They said they have no testing on that and the warranty will not be voided but may be notified if there is any issue related to the tape product. That is a very interesting statement. For me, I did not use the tape on the joists, but I did use them on the top of my pergola because that is not so critical compared to the deck boards. It is really up to you, especially if you think that the polyethylene is good enough to separate the rubberized asphalt. If you are building a pressure-treated wooden deck or using composite materials, definitely you want to use the tape. But for any PVC deck, I would stay away from it. Let's understand rotting. Everyone knows it is caused by moisture where water cannot evaporate. There are four main reasons. The direction of your house and how many hours of full sun you get plays a big factor. If you have large trees in your property, yes, it gives you some good shade, but at the same time, dirt can be trapped between the boards. All of the above are pretty common sense, but I want to focus on the last topic, ventilation. In modern DAC design, regardless of materials being used, such as wood, composite, or PVC, contractors love to hide the ugly space below the DAC. They use fascia boards for skirting. This leads to a huge problem, especially for low-level DAC close to the ground. To get rid of the moisture under the DAC, we are using a simple ventilation method. I installed this plastic screen, one on each side of the deck. For cosmetic reasons, you always want to put this on the side or at the back, depends on your deck design. It is pretty straightforward. I will shut up and let you watch.
this is not the best because I have stairs on the other side, so I have to put one vent under the bridge. Let's test it out if the ventilation works or not. This is Physics 101. All you need is having two vents, one on each side of the deck. You don't need a fan. Look, it works. Based on the information I have, if you have good sunlight during the day and you keep the deck with good airflow under the deck, the wood will not rot that easily. For PVC low-level deck, this is by far the best way I can think of. Okay, let's continue the project and work on the bridge. You always want to cut a 45 degrees miter joint to make the edge looks professional. Measure it and cut it with precision. It's not too difficult. I am just a DIY person. If I can do it, so can you. In the last video, I talked about there are two ways to install fascia boards. This is the second method using construction glue and screws. This is what Azak tells you to do, but honestly, I don't like it because moisture traps in there. Check out part 9 if you missed the last video. I showed you the other way to install the fascia boards. Installing the boards on the bridge is pretty straightforward. I am using both Cortex and Conceal Lock hidden fasteners. Notice that I cut the board and place it in the middle to create the right balance. Next time, I will share some DIY tips on installing the deck board in diagonal and finishing up the main deck. There were some mistakes I made and you don't want to repeat what I did. I hope my experience can help you to build your deck. Give it a thumbs up if there are some good information in this video. If you love DIY and you may want to check out other videos on my channel. Of course, if you want to see the progress of this project, remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.